This story has been lightly revised from the original text, Peggy of Metal Bridge, by Jenny Lever. Before we get started, take your time to get comfortable and settled. Today we're going to explore the hamlet of Metal Bridge in County Durham through the eyes of a young girl called Jenny. When you're ready and settled, we'll begin our story. Peggy of Metal Bridge. Metal Bridge is a small hamlet in County Durham, just a few miles south of Durham. The East Coast Main Line runs directly through Metal Bridge, but trains do not stop. When Jenny lived there as a teenager, there was a Methodist chapel with a hall, two shops which sold groceries and sweets, and the newspapers were delivered early every morning. The men of Metal Bridge used to meet on a bench at the top of the hill, which was close to Jenny's house. Her father, William, or Bill, as he liked to be called, was a cobbler by trade and had a small shop in Ferry Hill. Most days, he would meet at the bench with other men from the nearby area to discuss local issues and other matters. One afternoon, Jenny was at home looking out of the window and saw her father hurrying down the street towards the house from the meeting bench. A black car had pulled up outside the front of their house and something was thrown out of the back seat onto the road. The car then jiggered off. Jenny's father went to take a look and realised that a dog had been thrown from the car. She had been abandoned. He carefully picked her up and brought her inside. She was mainly white with bits of black and Jenny's father said that she was a fox terrier. He thought for a moment about what to do and then decided to walk to the next wee village in East Howell where the police station was. After explaining what had happened, the policeman said that if he wanted to keep the dog, then he was at liberty to do so. Jenny's father returned home to tell his excited family that they could keep the dog. Jenny and her sister Mary had never had a dog before, and so the first thing they did was think of names. The dog wasn't a puppy, so they decided to see if they could find out what she had actually been called. The family spent hours calling out doggy names to see if she reacted to any of them. It was a hard job, especially as they went through the alphabet starting with A. After almost giving up and nearing the last letters, they called out Peggy. And to their surprise, she reacted immediately. Peggy shot up and ran over, wagging her tail. From that very moment, Peggy was her name. Peggy was very good with children and liked to play hide and seek. The game would begin with Peggy sitting on mother's lap with her head resting on her knee. Jenny and Mary would then go off and hide as their mother slowly counted to 20. Then she would tell Peggy to go and find them. They would run through to the sitting room or upstairs to hide and wherever they went, whether it was behind doors or under a bed, Peggy would always find them. They tried so very hard to be quiet, but she was so very good at the game and they would laugh when she did eventually find them. The game had gone on for ages. They knew that she must have come from a family home because of her playfulness. They had great fun. Afterwards, she would rest on her wee cushion in the dining room. Not long after she joined the family, it came as a surprise to find out that Peggy was pregnant. This was probably part of the reason that she'd been abandoned. Jenny didn't understand why people would be so cruel, but she was glad that her family were able to give her a good home. Peggy had three puppies, who all looked like her. Peggy and her puppies were very naughty together, 
and liked to chase small animals, birds and geese. Eventually, they needed to find them homes. One pup went to an auntie in Washington and she named him Pat. Sadly, Peggy's bad habits got worse. She chased and ripped apart birds that she caught. Her instincts just got the better of her. One day, when out for a walk with father, she killed a goose, which, unfortunately for her, had been the farmer's prized breeding goose. The farmer then spoke to father to say that if it had been any of the others, it might not have been so bad. But, as a result of the incident, they had to have her put to sleep. It was a sad end for Peggy, and also for Pat, who behaved the same way as his mother. Peggy had been part of the family for a number of years, and was always remembered as Peggy of Metal Bridge. They never forgot her, especially those games of hide and seek, and all the fun they had together. <laughs>